from early on, I kind of committed to creating a new body of work, which the downside of that was I didn't want to bring my old work in, which means I had to create everything. Everything that I wanted to show was, I had to create it in the last, you know, two months. So, um, yeah, there's a discipline is <laughs> something that, you know, and just, just trying to work as quickly as I can and trying to make as much as possible and, and hoping that it, it, you know, works out and that it all looks okay in the end. Um, and, um, uh, you know, like I said, since it was, it was kind of developing as I did it, um, just having some, you know, I did kind of come up with the process, and so I was just kind of having some faith in the process that it's, you know, I'm going to produce something that's presentable. Justin, you <coughs> talked about uh, your previous tights, uh, and, and they were tight with the ones that I've seen, uh, beautiful, um, to this much more loose composition. What were your challenges there? And how do you deal with the negative, you mentioned negative space. Mm -hmm. um, and how are you liking it? Um, the, I think the first part, first, I, I really like, again, the forms that I've kind of come up with. And partly because, like I said before, it's kind of freed up my ability to draw again. Um, the thing that's, um, I'm, struggling with is color right now um you know if you look at all the stuff over there all the paintings they're it's like a technicolor something you know it's like there's so much going on and uh uh so after a few where they like this one looked kind of thoroughly psychedelic i wanted to uh, kind of tone it down a little bit or maybe um put some more thought into the entirety of the, the color composition as opposed to this sky is this color and this sky is this color, you know. Um, that's that. What was your first question? <laughs> well, uh, how, how are you liking it? Um, and it's, it's funny that you bring up color because my mm. next question was, tell us a little bit about your palette. And then I realized you have an entirely different interpretation because you say technical and all over uh -huh. the place. And I think they're very balanced and, and muted and soft in, oh. in color. So great. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, the the so colors, uh, the palette that you've chosen, I can see um, are connected with sunsets and rises. Yeah. So there we go. Um, is it, so? How are you liking? How are you liking this new direction, and uh, how do you see yourself progressing well, from where we're going on? I like it. I do like it, and I think it's more. In, the process is more enjoyable than my previous process, um, and I think there are a lot more challenges with it because it's it's um, I, I don't have a sort of a compositional. Um, sort of a, a single composition that's already figured out that I keep repeating over and over again. Um, I see it as a beginning, uh, beginning of an idea. And uh, like I said before, it's only really about two months old, the idea. So um, I'm not really sure where I'm gonna take it next, where it's gonna, if it's gonna calm down a little bit or, or what. Um, the, the oil painting in there was a challenge uh, because I, Actually, something I really like about these is the uh, is the negative space of the paper, um, where the, the paint is is sort of one. Uh, it's it's one surface. It's one texture, uh, sort of one world, and the paper is something completely different. It's a different texture. It's flat. It's not. It's not. There's no um, sense of depth to it, uh, and so as conceptually, that works for me. What I was going to do. When I got to the oil painting, um, it didn't make sense to me to, to leave it white, and so I included color in there, and then it was more about matching color. It's like, well, this looks good, and this kind of makes the, the stuff pop out, and um, so 
that's an open question that I'm not really sure about yet. So, Kim, uh, your subject matter is really specific. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it. I call them nooks, um, and they are spaces for whimsical wanders, usually tiny. Um, they were always the whimsical wanders of a fantasy realm or a fairy realm, but um, through this ceramics process, I was actually able to make some for more visible wanders like mice and toads. Um, and they're just houses or doors to help kind of draw attention to the smaller details of a forest, which can um, lead itself to looking at more of the grander views, but there are a lot of details within those views that are beautiful and um, inspiring. So the, the little uh, equipment that you have in front of you is not really representative of what you made. A lot of your work has other natural elements in it. So why did you pick clay and then added the natural elements? Why didn't you work in wood or whatever? I like being able to take the clay and mold it um, to what I see. Uh, wood, I have to work a little bit more with what it gives me. And clay, even though there are times when it's pretty sure, certain that the clay wants to be a certain form or a certain way, um, I can play with it a little bit more. Uh, I like the challenge of being able to um, make the wood grain. I love making the wood grain in the clay and trying to copy the grain knots and hide little details within um, as if there was a gnome or a fairy or a pixie that took it and kind of shaped it with magic rather than leaving it as nature left it. Um, I wanted to go to Tara. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your, your subject matter? We can see birds uh, in combination with flowers. How how did that come about, and is would we see these birds within the flowers that you're showing them? So this painting, the pygmy owl here, um, was the first of the series, actually. And it was, it was a breakthrough work for me. Um, part of becoming a professional artist is that process of finding your voice. It's that unique expression of oneself. And I had been struggling with voice. I had been struggling with how do I express myself artistically that doesn't look like mentors or teachers or other artists that I admire. And I had done a painting of a barn owl prior to this one. And while I was painting that piece, the idea for this piece came to me. So pygmy owls do sit on branches during the daytime. Uh, I've never seen one on a rhododendron, but I really liked the lush florals and the color, and that was part of what I felt like I was developing toward was a juxtaposition between the natural and the more lush and even somewhat surrealistic uh, addition of how the flowers surround the birds. So in the larger painting that's in the gallery, uh, it's a burrowing owl that's surrounded by these huge lush poppies. And I really chose those poppies in part because I had really good photo reference and in part because I love poppies and in part because it just felt like it was this lush, colorful, very rich expression that surrounded a bird and set this animal off in a way that made him even more sassy and noticeable and realistic than he perhaps already was. Sure, so when I decide what species that I'm going to paint, I seek out photography that shows the animal in the position that I would like to have it in, or at least partly the position that I would like to have it in. Um, I work with a lot of photography that's available online, so I have to search out photographs that either are licensed in such a way or are in the public domain in such a way that, that I can use those as photo reference. Although my husband 
is a bird guy and he photographs a lot of birds and so I'm lucky that I also get photo reference from him. Bird guy, he's an ornithologist. Uh, he studies birds for a living. And uh, so he also like is a bird watcher. Like he's obsessed with birds. So it kind of made sense that I would paint birds because birds are us. And I also have this this built-in bird expert to take a piece to and say, I don't think this is quite right. What's wrong with this? And he can look immediately and tell me, you need to change the length of the bill, or this is too round, or that is too flat, or, you know, and so he's, he's my, uh, he's my in-house ornithologist, yeah. <laughs> So I usually go through a process of sketching out some thumbnails to work out the composition, to decide you know, how I want the florals arranged, how I want the bird arranged with the florals. Um, I usually then do a large cartoon sketch that's to scale that is the base drawing for the painting. And then I transfer the drawing onto the panel. Mostly I'm working with these uh, wood panels. So I transfer that drawing over, and then I paint in acrylics. Uh, actually, this piece here is mixed media, so the bird was painted in watercolor with colored pencil overlay, and the flowers were done in acrylics, but I've since switched over to all acrylics. And I am kind of unorthodox. I use liquid acrylic craft paint, which kind of has the feeling and look of gouache, uh, more accessible. I don't have to drive to Portland to buy it. And uh, it was inexpensive, so I didn't feel like I was wasting paint or worrying about like experimenting in something that cost a lot of money. And so it allowed me to develop a technique. And then I started trying grown-up paints and realized that I really liked my craft paint better than the more expensive paints and went back to craft paint. Claire, um, your clay has the human body as its subject matter, uh, although not all of it is immediately visible. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and how you, how you decide on these individual pieces and, and what, what do they have to do with the human body? Ooh, where to begin? <laughs> um, so a lot of my work does have to do with the human body. It also has to do with um, our relationships to nature and um, memory. So a lot of times I'll start um, kind of like Justin, thinking about a memory or um, a feeling that I've experienced or somebody I know has experienced. Um, this piece in particular is kind of about... Um, Could you hold it up a little? Because you held it up in such a way nobody saw it. There we go. Everybody can see now. There realistic hearts. Um, I, yeah, I guess I can speak to this piece in particular. Um, that comes from kind of the memory of uh, first love, um, teenage angst, and kind of wh what are those feelings, and, and how do you deal with them, and um, how do you make that into like a physical concrete object? Um, and so on the inside, they all have quotes um, that either I've come up with or changed a little bit, um, mostly mostly what I've come up with. Um, my other pieces also come from a lot of, of memory, um, relationship to the ocean in particular with this series. <laughs> Thud. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of where they start, um, and then I, I usually have an idea for a, a shape or a style of object. So this one was kind of like a large casserole dish is where I started with. Um, a lot of my pieces are vases as well, so I, I start with that general idea and then kind of abstract it out from a body. This one having to do with um, kind of hips and butts and things like that, um, and fat rolls over here. <laughs> and I abstract it into kind of, this one is more of like ocean waves and um, crashing and flowing through that. And then how does that reflect the body and how does the body reflect the ocean? Um, my other pieces also have to do with that as well. 